All right, how to replace a toilet. So you guys, just so you know, there's step-by-step -step instructions you can download by going to the link at the bottom of the description on this video. Click on that link and you'll be able to download literal step-by-step -step instructions, the same ones I'm gonna use here today. I might do some editing to make them a little better, but you'll be able to get those downloaded for free. Now, something I didn't put on that list that I'm gonna mention now, and hopefully I'll get the list updated, is you need to do a measurement before you go buy your toilet. And that measurement is gonna be from the wall to this little tab here. I hope you can see it in the video. But when you measure from the wall to where the bolts go, there's two types of toilets. You're gonna to have a 10 inch setback and a 12 inch setback. And that you're looking at where the bolts are. So this one's a 12. 99% of them that you're gonna find at Home Depot or Lowe's are gonna be a 12 inch setback. But measure because if you have a 10, you're gonna to need to make sure that you buy a 10 inch setback. Otherwise, you're gonna to try to install this toilet. It's not gonna fit. And then you're gonna to have to uninstall this toilet, take it all the way back to Home Depot and return it. You don't wanna to have to do that. So make sure if you've got a 12 or a 10 inch setback, this is a 12 and this one that I have up here is a 12 also. So let's just use my instructions step by step. Clean toilet and surroundings, already did that. Next is going to be to turn off the water. Make sure when you're turning the water off that that valve feels like it's actually working. This one's pretty old, but it feels okay to me. So we got the valve turned off. Now we're gonna flush all of the water out of the toilet. Just hold that handle down for a little bit, make sure it all gets out. You can even shake the tank a little to get a little extra in there. Once you've got it flushed and the water turned off so it's not filling back up, next thing you're gonna do, oh, and of course this one has, this one sets up really high, so there's actually quite a bit of water that gets left in there. Luckily, I did buy two packages of this liquid lock because the next thing you're gonna do this product here, Liquilock, this is kind of like what's in diapers and stuff. It's a very, very, very absorbent material and it's gonna suck up all that water so that when you go to move this toilet around and get it out of the house, you're not gonna have a bunch of water splashing out and getting all over the floor. So we're gonna add, I'm just gonna add one full package to the tank up here. Hopefully it gets the job done. If not, we might have a little bit of a mess. You can keep as many of these on you as, I, as you want. But unfortunately, I accidentally only have two packages. You can also buy these in larger jars and stuff. A little bit in there, a little more. And then I'm gonna add a little more to the tank up here. There we go. Next, what's the next step? Replace shut off valve if necessary. I don't think it's gonna be necessary, but when you go to shut it off, if it doesn't work, then you're gonna wanna replace it. And these may be in a different order, guys. I mean, you can pick your own order. It doesn't have to be the precise order that I do. I'm probably gonna edit this afterwards anyways. Bring in the new toilet in the box while the liquid lock sets, cause this is gonna have to set here for a little bit to absorb water. So you can't really see it in the frame, but I've got my new toilet up on the countertop here just waiting to go. So we're gonna skip that step. Now normally I'm also going to um, assemble, if it's not pre-assembled, normally I would assemble the new toilet before I ever put it in. I would drop it down all in one piece. However, this one's pretty large and heavy, so I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna do this in pieces. Remove bolts and break the caulk seal on the old toilet. That's of course, if there is a caulk seal, there may not be. But we're gonna come down here and pop these caps off where the bolts are, if I can. There we go, one. There goes the one. Got the caps off. Let's go ahead and take some bolts loose while that's setting. You don't really need many tools for this. Basically, some channel locks or some other large pliers, a scraper, and a crescent wrench will get you through just about all of this. Let's see how the gel's doing. We've still got some liquid going on there, so we're gonna let that continue to absorb. 
So we've got the toilet unmounted here. I tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chances and I'm just going to go ahead and take this line off now. Huh, looks like our gel did a good job. No water coming out. Just a couple little drops. Remove supply line, which I just now did. Clean up any spilled water. We don't have any spilled water. Remove bolts and break caulk seal on old toilet. Yep, that seal is broke already. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to bring the box that the new toilet came in. I'm going to bring it in here and I'm going to pick this toilet up and put it straight into that box so that instead of carrying a dirty toilet through someone's house on the way out, I'm just pushing a cardboard box out and we shouldn't have any water dribbling on the floor either. The balance point for these toilets is usually right about here at the back of the seat because you've got a lot of weight all the way in the back over there. And then we can get it in the box. Now if you want to be if you want to be safe you might go ahead and remove this lid before you go to put it in the box. This could have fallen and damaged the floor. That's my mistake, but I'm pointing that out to y'all now. All right, let's go. Here it is. Next on the list is going to be to scrub the floor. Right specifically where the caulk is going to be. This is a different base up here than what this one was, but we're just going to make sure this whole floor is clean and we're going to remove any little pieces of the old, uh, the old wax ring. So we'll straight up. And then we'll also get the old bolts out. Oof, those are nasty. All right, got the old bolts out. Got the caulk scraped up. I'm going to go ahead and clean this floor too. And I'm just cleaning everywhere that I might need to be caulking the new toilet down, right about where I think that base is going to sit. doesn't have to be spotless or anything. It's not so much to seal it as it is to just bed it against the floor so it doesn't rock around. All right, there's that piece. Next, I believe, is going to be the bolts and the wax ring. There we go. So the wax or the foam ring and the bolts. Now. I like to buy, these toilets are going to come with a wax ring. Pretty much any one you buy is going to come with its wax ring already. I like to go ahead and pick up the extra thick wax ring just so I know for sure that I'm not going to have to stop this job. Go to Home Depot to get a thicker wax ring, especially if you have a lot of tile built up and stuff. So I like to get the extra thick one and just use that instead of the one that comes with the toilet. There's our hardware. I'll go ahead and do the hardware before I do the wax ring. Just slide these up in here. You'll notice on the hardware, let me show you the new one. You'll notice that funny looking end there. That helps you slide it into the slot that you're gonna slide it into. You'll see what I mean when you do these. And then you can turn it sideways so that it catches that slot. So let me point something out to y'all real quick too. When you put these on, this, this head that you see right here, it's gonna be down and inside your flange. And then you're gonna have your flange. I like to put the washer from the old one on top of there just to make sure everything sits level. It's not always necessary. And then you're gonna put one of your nuts on. And every toilet's gonna have different hardware, so you'll have to look at your instructions, but they're mostly pretty similar. And then you take this nut all the way down so that you're securing this bolt onto here so that it's sturdy and solid and pointing up waiting for the toilet. And then you have wing nuts or other types of nuts that you'll put on after you put the toilet on. 
but I like to take the washers from the old one if I have an old one and I'm doing a replacement and go ahead and use those washers in here too. There we go. Those are on. They're basically parallel with each other there. We've got a clean floor where we're going to put the new toilet down on. Next thing is going to be this extra thick wax ring. Y'all might try out using those foam rings too. I don't really know if they're any good. I haven't used one myself. I have seen a whole bunch of them. Why doesn't that seem to fit properly? All right, well, maybe we're not going to use this because it doesn't actually fit my flange. So this time around, oh, actually, that is the one that came with the toilet. Let's try my extra thick one here. So next, we're going to put the wax ring on here. I've got my extra thick one that I purchased for every single one of my toilet installs. We get that down, nice good seal. That's a very thick ring. We're gonna be squishing that down afterwards. And now you could take your new toilet. And like I said, oftentimes I, these toilets oftentimes come pre-assembled and if they don't, I'll pre-assemble them before I put them on. But this is a larger, heavier toilet. So instead of pre-assembly, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble it after it's down. Where'd you go? There you are, and there you are. Once you get your toilet on, you can just give it some weight and start squishing that wax gasket down. I'm gonna pop some of the other hardware on before I squish down all the way. Actually, let's see if I can just flatten it real quick sitting on it. All right, I got it figured out. So what was going on here is this flange sits up a little bit high and this flange here, as well as the old one, I've tried two different ones now because I did have a spare on hand. The diameter of this piece right here, which is supposed to sit down inside there nicely, it was not sitting down inside there nicely. These two actually do not fit properly. So that kept us from being able to actually squish all the way down to the floor. So the solution to that is to go old school and just use a regular wax ring that doesn't come with one of these plastic flanges. That flange is not necessary. It's nice to have, but it's not absolutely necessary. So since we're just using the wax ring, this time we're just gonna pop it onto the toilet instead of popping it on the floor because we don't need to line up that plastic flange there. But that was the problem we were having with not being able to squish it down. Before I touch too much, I better get some new gloves on. Go ahead and wipe this floor down with a clean rag one more time since I stepped all over it. Now we can just pop our wax ring out and pop it onto the toilet and hopefully we'll be good to go this time. There we go. Nice and stuck. Looking pretty good. Squish her down. Not too bad. Now we'll definitely, I caulk all of mine anyways, but this is one that you'll definitely have to caulk whether you like to do that or not because the tile on this floor are not even at all. And when you get those uneven tiles, it puts a lot of pressure on individual parts of the toilet and you definitely don't want that pressure being applied like where the edge of a tile sticks up because <coughs> that could crack the toilet and it can also prevent you from just having it be stable enough for these bolts to hold it down well you've got better take this off and show you these plastic washers 
go over these bolts first and then your wing nut goes on top of them. Well, actually, these washers go on top and then your wing nut, but this plastic is what prevents your metal washer and wing nut, again, from cracking that base. Nice and tight now. All right, next step is gonna be to put the tank on. So let me grab the tank. Now, just in case you all can't see, these bolts here are already tightened into the tank. So you don't have to really do anything with these, but you do have to put your actual gasket on here to go between the tank and the bowl. You forget that gasket and it's just gonna leak water everywhere. There we go. And like I said, guys, these will all be different. Not every brand's gonna be built the same, but it's all the same basic principle. This one happens to come with wing nuts. Come under here and find those bolts that came through and get your wing nuts with your washer on. Get this other one started on the other side. Make sure you kind of tighten these down evenly. You don't want to tighten one side and then put the other side on. You want to get them both kind of bounce back and forth between sides so they're both tightening down at an even rate. And when you tighten these, you want to tighten them all the way until the porcelain touches. You don't want to go tight after that, but you do want the porcelain to actually be touching. That way this doesn't get all wobbly. All right, so we've got the toilet in, tightened to the floor. We've got the tank on, tightened to the bowl. I'm gonna go ahead, you can't really see, but I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect our supply line while I'm here. Typically, if you have strong hands, you can just hand tighten this. The tightness is just about as far as you can go with hand tightening. If you don't feel like you have super strong hands from doing this kind of work all the time, you might want to grab your channel locks or something and just give it a little bit of an extra tightening so you don't have a leak right there at the end. Okay, so while we're at this phase right now, this is a good time to just go ahead and test it out for leaks. So we'll turn the water back on. While that's filling up, we'll get the top to the tank prepared. And then something else we're gonna do, we gotta put the toilet seat on. However, this house has a different seat that we're gonna put on here because it's uh, made for like a toddler seat as well for potty training. All right, so before I put this toilet seat back, you're gonna notice that while I'm working here, I'm just gonna keep flushing this toilet over and over. And the reason that I'm doing that is to make sure that we don't have any leaks before I seal it to the floor. And also, by the way, I'm not giving any instruction really on the toilet seat because there's tons of different brands and they're all gonna connect differently. They're all going to assemble differently. They have different types of bolts and setups to go through the holes here. But the instructions that you're going to find on yours are going to be very easy to follow. It's really not a difficult job. Nice and tight toilet seat. There we go. See, these are neat. It stays up unless you pick it up and pull it down. All right, so this toilet is fully installed. We got the seat on, we got the water hooked up. We're gonna keep on flushing it. If I don't see any leaks, then I'm just gonna seal up the base. And when you seal up the base, you wanna leave a gap in the back so that if this ever does back up from below and come up under the toilet, 
you want for there to be that gap so that that liquid can come out and you can see it and identify it and call a plumber. You don't want to seal it all in under the toilet. All right, guys, that's it. I'm probably gonna tighten up this caulk just a little more. These tile are really off, so the toilet has a pretty decent gap between the base and the floor. So I'm gonna try to make that look as pretty as I can. But this toilet's complete. This is a functional toilet now. The only thing left to do when I do these on a job with a tenant, I put a piece of printer paper on top of the toilet seat. I tape it on. This says, do not use. And I let them know not to touch this toilet until tomorrow morning. That's gonna make sure that all that sealant and caulk is set, just in case the sealant and caulk isn't fully set. If they wait till the next morning, that will be set. And even if there's a little teeny tiny wobble due to the uneven floor or something, because you don't tighten these down really, really hard, but just in case it's a little uneven and there's a little bit of a wobble, that sealant's gonna be set and it's gonna stop this toilet from moving on the floor at all. It's gonna bed it to the floor perfectly. So that's about it guys. This is how easy it is to change a toilet. It seems like some that'd be difficult. And just to go over the numbers real quick, I charge for my property managers. I have a deal with them where I do toilets for $350, but I choose the toilet. So I buy, there's always one. This one I think was 96 or $99. I buy about a hundred dollar toilet. And that leaves me with $250 to go pick up the toilet, drive to the job, install the toilet, take the old toilet and get rid of it. All combined gives you 250 bucks to do that. And in truth, maybe you can figure about an hour of drive time and shopping time and about 30 minutes to do the toilet. After you've done three or four of these, this will quickly become about a half hour job for you. I know it looks like more, but they're really simple. And like I said, sometimes they even come pre-assembled. So you don't even have to put the tank on. You just take the old toilet off. You just turn off the water, put your stuff in there, take off your supply line, remove the entire toilet, get your new wax ring on, put the entire toilet on, put your bolts back down, put your caps on. In fact, I did forget the caps actually. These are the caps that come with it. And these white washers that you saw over here are gonna grab the cap. So once you put it on, it just clicks over those washers and that's what holds it in place. This one ain't clicking. There we go. Nope, not yet. You just gotta pound it down just right. There she is. And now this toilet is set and we're all done. I may touch up the caulk. I don't think I'm even gonna need to actually. So that's all there is to it guys. Good luck.